How do I start a youth group? How do I rebuild a student ministry? How do I go from being a volunteer to the paid youth pastor? What should I focus on when starting a ministry? Or how do I go from ministering at one church to another one? These are questions that I not only see all the time online, but also hear when I talk with student ministry leaders. So on this episode of Student Ministry Connection, we're going to address many of these questions. Welcome to Student Ministry Connection, a podcast for those who serve in student ministry, want to connect, and desire to grow. My name is Steve Cullum, and I've served in student ministry for over 20 years. And back in 2007, I moved to New England to serve as a very first youth pastor at a new church. And while I got my education and served in various capacities like a volunteer, intern, resident, part-time, and full-time, I had never started a student ministry from scratch. I was very excited, of course, but I was also very overwhelmed at the thought of this. Now, it wasn't like I started completely from scratch, as there was a small group of students who had been meeting on a regular basis with some leadership from a couple volunteers. So they handed over that leadership to me, and now I was the one called by God and this church to start a full-on student ministry. God led me through it, and I learned so much throughout this entire process. And before I knew it, it was 10 years later, and the ministry was going strong with an amazing team of student and adult leaders. And after my time serving at that church, God called me to another church where the ministry needed to be rebuilt. So while this was a completely different experience in so many ways, I was able to use a lot of what I had learned from the last setting in this one as well. Don't hear me wrong, though. There was a lot of adapting and contextualizing like we talked about in the last episode, but I did see a lot of similarities. So I'm a part of several online groups of student ministry leaders, and over the last several years, I've started to see similar questions pop up over and over, and I thought it'd be helpful to start addressing some of those questions on this podcast. And the one that we're addressing today on this episode is how to start a new ministry, or start over in ministry, or rebuild a ministry. I think this is always something good to consider, but I also know that there are so many brand new student ministry leaders post-COVID. But before we jump into all that, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this episode of the podcast. G-Shades is a youth ministry curriculum and teaching strategy focused on helping students see everyday life situations through the lens of the gospel. G-Shades has options to fit everyone as well, with three plans to choose from. This curriculum gives you the resources that you need to do what you do better. Do you need message outlines, a discussion guide, and a game? That's just $20 a month. If you're looking for a higher production value, including bumper videos, Instagram devotionals, and parent guides, that's $30 a month. And if you want an affordable, engaging video curriculum, G-Shades has you covered for only $40 a month. You will not find a better youth ministry video curriculum at that price point anywhere. Head over to gshades.org, that's G-S-H-A-D-E-S dot O-R-G to download season four of G Shades curriculum and use the promo code connection at checkout to receive an extra $20 off your order. G Shades, seeing life through the lens of the gospel. Thank you G Shades for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. You can find the link to G Shades in the podcast show notes. I also have some exciting news. G Shades creator Mike Haynes has just published a book called Life Through the Lens of the Gospel and he recorded a quick message for you all to tell you what it's all about. Connection ears, what up? Hey, has Connectioneers caught on yet? Oh, I I hope it has. Listen, hey, the one thing that's been really bugging me about running G-Shades for the past five years is that a gospel lens, man, that's not just helpful for students. Like, that's helpful for kids and adults, too. I mean, it was helpful for me personally way before uh, it ever became a curriculum. And so that's why I'm so pumped to share that we have released a beta test curriculum for children's ministries that we're calling G-Kids. And then for adults... We just published a book on Amazon that I've written that's called Life Through the Lens of the Gospel. And the book is an amazing way for adults to begin exploring this this gospel lens faith paradigm in their own lives. And, And I hope that you, your volunteers and the adults in your church, I hope you all find it helpful. So paperback, ebook, audiobook, you name it, it's out there on Amazon. So go grab it, tell people about it, and together, my dearest connectioneers, together. We can help kids, students, and adults all over the place 
begin to see through the lens of the gospel. Bye. Back in 2015, I wrote a blog post about this question of restarting a ministry or starting from scratch a ministry. And the tips that I passed on back then about how to start a new youth group or restart one are some of the same tips that I want to share with you here in 2023. But I'd also like to add just a few other tips that I've learned over the past several years after rebuilding a ministry in another church. So tip number one is to start small. You only have so much of a capacity to build relationships and to pastor people. All the different psychologists and sociologists will all tell us that as humans, we have a limited capacity. And so we need to remember that. Even Jesus started with a small group of 12 apostles, and really there was only three of them and they were super close to him. So let's take that same model and then approach our ministry in the same way, to start small. Don't feel like you have to do huge events. They take a lot of work and a lot of money most of the time. And so when you're thinking about growing a ministry, especially in the beginning, where do you want to put your investments? Do you want to put it into building these gigantic events, or do you want to put it into people? Focus on a core group who you can pour into, and then send them out to do the same. With proper discipleship, they will begin to bring their friends. I think this is also really important when you're going into an existing ministry. Try not to make any significant changes in the first six months or even 12 months if you can. Use this time to ask a lot of questions in order to understand your context and also build a vision and a strategy for the ministry that you're going to lead alongside your team. Resist all urges to come in with this fixed plan right at the beginning. Instead, start small by thinking about that small group of people that you're going to invest in at the very beginning, but also think small in terms of your overall plan. Ask lots of questions and build it over time. The second tip is to start young. I usually stray away from business terms when I talk about the church, but sometimes it does make sense. You maybe have heard the term ROI or return on investment. While some of you might feel led to invest in the older students when you start in a ministry, remember that they're going to be graduating soon. This does not mean to ignore them, though. Repeat, do not ignore them. But if you invest in the younger ones, this will help you build a lasting ministry over time. Those middle schoolers will turn into really strong high school students in a couple of years. And when done well, those students will be more invested and also lead out with the younger ones once they get into high school. So build over time and grow the ministry up. Start young. Don't ignore the older ones, but put more investment in the younger ones in order to build over time and grow the ministry up. Tip number three is to build a team. Remember when we talked about capacity earlier? I want to bring that up again because you are only able to do so much on your own. Let's say you live in a town of 2,000 teenagers. Do you really think that you can reach all 2,000 of them on your own? I mean, even if you live in a small town of 200 teenagers, that's still way beyond what one person can do. You cannot and should not do this on your own. Even if you have a bigger than average people capacity, we need to be equipping and empowering others to partner with us in this ministry. So let others join you. So I encourage you again to start small and recruit a small team in the beginning. For some of you in a small setting, this might mean just two or three people who can join you. For others, maybe that's 10 or 12, but recruit a small team and invest in them and help them to know what it's like to invest in students, to lead a good conversation with students, to teach the Bible, and ultimately to disciple others. In fact, use this time to disciple any of them who don't feel comfortable discipling others, and then set them up and empower them to do the ministry alongside you as a team. And over time, they will help you grow this team as it's needed. The big thing is to remember that you cannot and should not do this alone. So build a team. Tip number four is to connect with parents. Early in my first internship, I read this book called Family-Based Youth Ministry by Mark DeVries, which completely changed my perspective on student ministry. I got into ministry because I liked hanging out with and investing in the next generation, and I suspect that's why you did as well. But over time, I've read a lot more books and blogs, and I've heard a lot of podcasts and conference speakers, 
and read in the Bible that parents are the primary spiritual leaders of their homes. So we need to connect with parents and invest in them. What does this mean? I think first it means regular communication. And this includes emails and texts, but also meeting in the parking lot before and after youth group or before and after church, talking with them at student events, and so many other things about youth group events, about upcoming teaching series, how they can partner with us, all those different things. We need to be communicating with parents on a regular basis. They should never feel like they're left out and in the dark. Also, we need to be asking them questions to learn what they need and how we can be praying for them. Do your best not to stiff arm parents and leave them on the outside, but invest in them by asking them those questions and also lean on them. I mean, they are the experts of their own kids. In order to get to know the students in your setting, you're going to need to spend time with those students, but you're also going to need to spend time with their parents as they know so much about their own kids. So lean on them. Also provide them with resources, but please do not expect them to immediately know how to use them or to start using them right away. Many parents don't really know what it means to be the spiritual leaders of their families. And so you need to walk alongside of them as you teach them how to use those resources. And finally, build relationships and friendships with those parents. If done well over time, these parents will be some of your biggest ministry supporters. And tip number five is to network with others. Maybe you didn't hear me earlier when I say that you cannot and should not do ministry alone. We need to get involved in local networks or start one. And when you do, I encourage you to focus on these four things as outlined by the National Network of Youth Ministries. First of all, we need to be praying together. That means both within your regular meetings, but also outside of those times as well, texting each other and finding out how we can pray for each other and actually doing that. Secondly, we need to build relationships. Some of my best friends are other youth leaders. We just get each other. And so a lot of times our best friendships are going to come from those local networks because we just understand each other. Third, we need to be sharing resources. Your church might have something that another church needs, or their church might have something that you need. I think we need to take a page from the Acts Church and share resources and help each other out. And finally, we need to be strategizing together. It's so important not only to share what works and what doesn't work at your church, but also come up with strategies in order to reach more and more teenagers in your community. So strategize together with those local networks. We also need to get to know other youth-focused organizations in your community. Now, this can be faith-based organizations like Young Life and FCA, but we also need to get to know our schools and the rec league sports teams and so many other youth-focused organizations in our community. And we need to be partnering with them as much as we can. And if you haven't done so yet, connect with others in online groups. Now, I know that not all the online groups are the best all the time, but there are some great conversations that you can have with youth leaders all around the world. And if you want to learn more about what networking is all about, I encourage you to check out episodes 48, 100, and episode 107 as well, where we talk a lot about networking and connecting with others in ministry. So those are my five tips to starting a student ministry or five areas to focus on when you're restarting a student ministry or five priorities when rebuilding a student ministry or five goals when starting in a new church or five, well, you get my point. And we would love to hear where you are in your ministry, especially if you're trying to build a brand new student ministry, restart one or rebuild one. Please reach out and connect with us on social media. I'm at Steve Cullum on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and the podcast is at Stu Men Connect on Twitter and at Student Ministry Connection on Instagram. And if you know someone who is starting a new youth group or going to be starting one or restarting one or rebuilding one, please consider sharing this with them. And if you'd like to partner with me as a financial partner for my ministry with National Network of Youth Ministries, please follow the link in the podcast show notes. You can also find a link to sign up for my ministry newsletter and how to contact me in the show notes. Also, if any of you are taking high school students to CIY Move at the University of Central Missouri from July 17th to 21st of 2023, I'll be there serving as campus pastor, and I would love to meet up with you in person, pray with you, and also buy you a coffee. So make sure to connect with me. And before we wrap up, I also want to remind you about our podcast sponsor, G Shades. Be sure to visit gshades.org and use that promo code CONNECTION to save $20 off your order. And also, don't forget to check out Mike's book, Life Through the Lens of the Gospel, now available on G Shades' website and on Amazon. 
Thanks again for being here for this episode and for all of your support. Be sure to stay connected and may God bless your ministry.